Provide the nutrients it needs and the environment it needs to grow. So, but you said that you are going to provide an environment where this organism can survive. Does it necessarily mean it's going to make you ill? No. 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 So, any organism capable of supporting the nutritional and physical growth requirements of an organism. Something we, we we're a host for a whole bunch of what inside of us? Bacteria. Bacteria and stuff, right? Or microbiome. Most of it does what to us? Beneficial. Most of the benefit? No. Yeah. Mm. Some of it. Some of it. Yeah, most of it. Yeah. it is, but most of it. Okay, wait till we get to the definition. Okay. 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 An infectious disease, the disease state or illness brought about by the interaction with another organism. That is an infectious disease. Disease itself just means what? Illness. Like no, it means more like you're sick. Okay. Like illness. So what does it mean though? From our standpoint, what does it mean? Like something that's chronic? Well, chronic, you could have a chronic disease. You could have what? Acute. A disease state. This is talking about an infectious disease here. So this is a disease state brought on by what? Some sort of infectious organism, right? Disease itself is just what? Anything that causes an alteration in your physiology, a negative impact on your physiology, right? Diabetes, is that considered a disease? Mm. How does that affect you? Is that negative or positive? Negative. negative. It can be pretty negative, right? Coronary artery disease is what? Negative. Negative. So disease, anything that can affect your physiology negatively. Colonization. The presence and multiplication of living organisms on or within the host. So we are completely what? Colonized, right? Two to three percent to four percent of our body is what? Little friends, right? And infection, so you go back to this, and I wanted that to open separately and it didn't, is when organisms invade the body's external defenses, multiplies, and becomes established in the body. That's an infection. Yeah. That's when they start causing harm. The disease state is when it what? When I say about disease, when it starts affecting your physiology in some extent. Okay. And microflora, we're talking about that, are the bacteria inhabiting exposed surfaces on our body. But I thought they were inside of us. A lot of our microflora was inside of us, in our guts. It's not. It is. So how does it fit that definition? Or does it fit that definition? Yes. No? Does it fit that definition or not? Microflora, bacteria inhabiting exposed surfaces of the body. Most of them are going to be where? Inside of our GI tract, right? So does it fit that definition? No. Layer? Kind of on the outer layer? Of where? Your skin? Not the skin, but the wall. We are basically just being what? <laughs> a tube, right? So when things are in your gut, in your stomach, in your GI tract, are they inside of us? No. No, no they're still outside of us. So this is fine. This is just you right here. Hate to say it. So <coughs> it in, stuff comes out. Well, I'm just not inside of your tissues. It is still outside of the body. Mm -hmm. Right? And virulence or virulence factors, we'll talk about this a little bit. Are the factors or the properties that increase the potential to cause disease. The more virulent an organism is, the more capable it is of causing disease. What is more virulent? The common cold or influenza? Influenza, right? 
staph epidermidis, or streptococcus pneumoniae? Strep. Strep, Strep. Strep right? And we'll talk about virus factors, okay? And they can change. This is one thing we talk about. We talk about it in micro. When you talk about virulence factors, when you get into clinics and you get around clinical specimens, they're going to be much more what than laboratory specimens in general? Dangerous. Hmm? More virulent, right? Because they're actually in a body causing disease at that time, so they've got all these virulence factors usually upregulated and turned on. A lot of times you grow bacteria in the lab over and over and over again, it starts turning those off because why? doesn't need them. So it's not going to make stuff it doesn't need. So they can actually become less virulent for a while. All right. Pathogens, and I put true in here. Why did I put true pathogens? Microorganisms so virulent that they are rarely found in the absence of disease. Or if you are exposed to these organisms, you are more than likely going to get what? A disease. Sick, right? That's true pathogens. What are opportunistic pathogens? They're the ones that only get you sick if they're in the right environment. Like a puncture wound and... No, not a puncture wound. Yeah, because it gets in like when it's not supposed to. It can. Usually you got to be somewhat immunocompromised. Mm -hmm. Usually. For them to get it. Now, there's something... Actually, she got... Okay, two things. Let me back up a little bit. Usually you have to be immunocompromised, right? That's what you got to talk about. But there are instances where if they get in places they're not supposed to be, That's what I mean. they can also be amino. So if your gut, if you have intercoccus fecalis, right? Intercoccus fecum, mm -hmm. they're part of your normal gut flora. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not immunocompromised, if they get inside of the gut, they're going to do what? Cause disease. So mm -hmm. either immunocompromised or they get somewhere they're not supposed to be. But as long as they stay put and you're healthy, they shouldn't be causing problems. So staph. In our cocktails, um, several of those. Saprophytes are free living organisms that attain their growth from dead or decaying organic material from the environment. And most of these are going to be what? Or a lot of them are going to be what? Mold. Mold and fungi. Fungi is a big saprophyte. They're decomposers. I'm going to skin I put fungi in there. But know what opportunistic pathogens are. Something that under, so let's put it this way, something that under normal circumstances will not cause disease in a healthy individual. So if they're where they're supposed to be and you're not immunocompromised, you should be okay. <clears throat> and this is where we're talking about the difference between um, our gut floor. So mutualism and mutualistic uh, relationship is what? Beneficial for both? Both people are divided, at least some benefit from it. It's a mutualistic um, situation. So, what's an example of a mutualistic situation? Um, like the good bacteria we have in our gut. Good. We give them a nice place to live, and they do what? They help protect us, right? Now, commensalism is an interaction in which colonizing bacteria acquire mutual needs and shelter. So, again, we give them food and a nice place to live, and what? So they don't affect us either positively or negatively. They're just kind of in it. Kind of like those adult children. Right? Yeah. <laughs> still live at home, right? <laughs> give them a nice place to live. You give them some food. Uh, they're not paying rent, but they can do a couple things around the house, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's commensal. And that's what most of the bacteria are in us, are commensals. That's what I'm getting at. They don't hurt us, and but they don't harm us either. Or at least directly enough. They can outcompete pathogens sometimes. In a parasitic relationship, only the infecting organism benefits from the relationship. So this is going to be a parasite. Now, parasites, do parasites want to kill their host? No. No. In fact, a good parasite really wants to become a what? Would like to become probably commensal, right? Where it can live off the host, but not what? Disturbing. Potentially damaging everything else. <clears throat> What's pregnancy? Pregnancy? Well, that's, I always get in trouble for this one all the time. <laughs> Parasitic. <Parasitic. Parasitic. laughs> Fetuses are basically what? Parasitic. Parasitic, right? Uh -huh. Except for that loving feeling they get. I'm not talking about that. But in terms of this relationship inside of a mother, they are what? Parasitic. Are they benefiting? Yes. Now, there's some issues with the immune system and everything else with that. 
They take everything. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Overall, they are taking what they need to make sure they survive, right? Even if it becomes detrimental to what? Mother. Uh, the mother, yeah. So basically, yeah. They're in, until they're what, 18, 25? <laughs> <laughs> they're still, they're still parasites. Life out of your parents, <laughs> right? True. <laughs> so, no, actually, they are actually getting big. Not, some people are really happy for that. But it's just, it is. I mean, that's a parasitic relationship. If the host sustains injury or pathological damage, then the parasitic disease can then lead to what? Infectious. Infectious disease. Not all parasites are going to be harmful, really. They're not going to benefit you. Let me be good. Like, they're going to cause at least some negative impact on the host. It just depends on how great it is. I have chickenpox virus inside of me right now, right? Is that relatively, is that kind of a parasite? Living in my cells right now, all viruses are obligate intracellular parasites. That's the definition. Mm -hmm. okay. But at some point, I could get what from this particular organism? Sick. Sick, and what's that called? Shingles. The shingles. So that means what? At yeah. this point, the host sustained injury or pathologic damage. So that would be infectious disease. So it's still somewhat of a parasitic infection, right? So just don't think of viruses as being parasites. That's really what they are. Mm. Because they have to do what? Infect a host cell to replicate. Parasites, by definition, are not going to be able to, at least, okay, let's go back to some people that learn this. Parasites have to have a host for at least part of their life cycle. And I don't want to get way in all different parasites in this class, but at least some portion of their life cycle, they have to have a host. They're not 100% free living. Is that better? Does that help a little bit? Yeah. No, the way viruses are. All right. What happened there? <laughs> that was fun. My computer has been. Speaking of parasites, I think my computer has one. Where did you see parasites on? Huh? Where did you see all parasites on? At least, so the reason that at least for some part of their life cycle, they have to be in their host. Okay, at least for part of it. So, Giardia is Giardia parasite. You don't know what Giardia is. You get it from drinking water and it gives you the bad. <laughs> it's a virus. So it's a parasite. Oh. But its cyst form is sort of free living in the water. But it'll never get out of that cyst form until what? Until it gets in a host and then it goes through part of its replicative life cycle and can start reproducing. So, for part of its life cycle, parasites have to be in their host. They, they, they grow in that relationship. It's an obligate relationship. Okay? They have to be in that relationship somewhere. Ticks. What do ticks do? They're, oh, they're extracellular parasites. Ectoparasites, right? Do they have to feed on blood? Yes. Or do they just like to? They, they need to. They have to, right? Because they need it to make what? The eggs and everything for their young. So part of their life cycle, somewhere they have to feed off a mammal. So they develop this parasitic relationship. They don't just, they just can't, they're not 100% free living on their own. And that's why you go back to fetuses, right? If you think about it, are they free living? They, they're not at that point, right? They're 100% dependent on the mother. All right, what is a prion? It's an unfolded protein. Misfolded protein. And I've got mad cow, I've got kuru, I've got BSE, which is what? Bone. Bovine spongiform encephalopathy. That's the ninety-seven dollar word, right? That's mad cow. I thought that was my okay. I was gonna that's say the, that's the that's the technical name. Right? Straight bees is sheep. Sheep. And actually, mad cow disease comes from straight bees. Okay. Kuro is what? Chronic wasting disease is what? I brought that up before in micro. Talked about hunters. But it's in what? It's in deer, antelope, and things like oh, that. Oh, that's right. That's the one that's called chronic wasting disease. So the question is whether or not you can jump with people or not. CJD is called Proitobiacus disease, and it's also what Kuru is. And this is the human form of it. Some people just develop Proitobiacus disease. They just have a protein for some reason. It misfolds, and they do what? Is it treatable? Can you survive it? Yes. No, these are 100% oh, Just kidding. <laughs> What's Kuru again? Kuru was, it's okay. 
Back in New Guinea, when they would have fighting amongst the different tribes, the winners would do what? Eat the... They would eat the brain to the losers. Okay? A yeah. relatively small population, the prions are in the brain mostly, so one of those guys, somewhere back in the past, had Crowfield Jacob's disease, yeah. and he was a loser. <laughs> Everybody in the whole tribe being part of his brain, right? So now some of them are going to start coming down with the incubation period can be 15 years. Now they lose next time. And, just keep and people eat their brains. And so it's got this sort of cycle going in New Guinea. It was called Kuru. And it was just for a The difference with bad counties and scrape peas is scrape peas is one that develops in sheep, but in England and the US and parts of Europe, they were grinding up the dead sheep and feeding them to the cows, cows. cows for more protein and then the cows are getting mad cow disease and then we grind up the cow into a hamburger and then we got what? CJD. CJD and it's called human variant protein. <coughs> All right, what's up? Let's just go through these. We got viruses, we got bacteria, we got retention, chlamydia, talk about these in a minute, fungi and parasites. So viruses are the smallest pathogens. And again, this book is kind of weird. Is that really true? Based on what they just said? No, it's just, what about parasites? No, parasites can be bigger. Viruses are tiny, but prions are just what? Oh. Protein. It's a single protein, right? So maybe, I don't know, it depends if they're really called a true pathogen. But in general, they're the smallest pathogens. They're submicroscopic, which means you can't even see them with a what? Microscope, right? A light microscope. They are obligate intracellular parasites. I talked about that before. So they're incapable of replication outside a living cell. They have to infect the cell to re reproduce. They have no organized cellular structure. They are just simply what? DNA. A protein coat and some sort of nucleic acid, either RNA or DNA. Okay. So a prion would be considered a pathogen if it has genes? No, because it's really not a gene. That's, they, they really don't know what happens. So proteins fold up, right? Yeah. Into beta sheets and alpha helices. For some reason, for, they don't know why. I just read a thing on it, they still don't know why. These things refold. So they convert from alpha helices to beta sheets. Energetically, that's not the way they want to go. So they don't know why it happened, but the weirder thing is when this one bumps into a healthy folded protein, it causes it to misfold too. So it's like the domino effect. It bumps into another one, that one misfolds. And then that one bumps into another one, that one misfolds. So that would be the idea they would call a pathogen. Now, <clears throat> the only thing that might keep it out of that definition, and you go back and look at it, is that they're not alive. Yeah, and they consider viruses a lie. See, I still don't consider viruses a lie, so I'm going to shoot that thing. So, anyway, for this one, we're going to say these are the smallest pathogens because they're considered a lie. All right. So, viruses just do what? What is a virus's only lot in life? What is its only goal in life? To survive multiple To reproduce. Multiple. Do they want to make you sick? No. No. Better than not to make you sick. You want to kill your host. If you're a parasite, and you have to have this host to survive, and you kill your host, what have you just done? Killed your You're done too, right? Yeah. So viruses really don't want to kill you. That's ideally they don't. In fact, they're even showing over time that HIV is becoming less and less virulent. That it's actually mutating and evolving, or it's becoming less and less virulent in humans. Now, it's still going to kill you, but not as long. Two types of viruses, they're either going to have an envelope, which means they bring part of the membrane with the pathogen, I mean, with the virus when it leaves the host cell, or non envelope viruses. In this case, it's just that protein coat and the nucleic acids inside. But this is all the relationship here. <clears throat> so the virus is going to do what? Animal cell. Virus is going to do what? Get inside. It's going to attach, get inside, it's going to uncoat. And uncoating is when it gets rid of its shell. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then it's going to start doing making copies of all the parts it needs, right? Mm -hmm. The next part is what? The assembly line. It's going to start making the parts, and then it's going to start assembling the parts, and you're going to mature virus, and it's going to do different things. 
it can either bud off if it's an envelope virus or it can lyse the cell and it can just spill out, okay? But in any, in any case, they're gonna go back and do what? This is whole cell lysis. They're gonna go back and reinfect another cell. That's just their life cycle, okay? What do I have over here? What is latency, what's oncogenesis, and what's malignancy? Oncogenesis is cancer causing. Cancer causing. Latency, like a long... Latency, that chicken pox virus right now inside of me is in latency, right? So, like it's so not, dormant. not affecting you like really you still have it. Right, it's still inside of me, it's still got its genome inside of me, but it's just sitting there. Something has to trigger it to come out of latency. The problem is some of these can cause oncogenesis, which is cancer causing. What are some examples of oncogenic? Oncogenic. What am I talking about HPV. Yeah. Classic example one right there. Um, Epstein-Barr virus. Anybody here ever had mono? Am I the only guy in the whole town that has mono? <laughs> <laughs> You're kissing girls. Mono, Epstein-Barr virus. Actually, almost all of you all have Epstein-Barr virus. Because it's not. It's just, late. You just never got the. clinical mononucleosis. Mm. Problem is, is Epstein-Barr virus has been linked to Burkhart's lymphoma. And those idiots like me who actually got sick <laughs> are at greater risk of actually contracting Burkhart's lymphoma down the road front for some reason. I don't know why. All right, so oncogenic viruses can transform cells into malignant cells and then HPV and then retroviruses. This is an HIV, this is HTLV1. What is a retrovirus? Cervical cancer? Adult T cell leukemia lymphoma, that's going to be HDLV1. Um, cutaneous T cell lymphoma, what about hep C? Um, it turns into a different thing? Yeah, but it can, but there are different mechanisms for it, yeah. Doesn't hep C like terrible now? Yeah, you take a $10,000 pill, pill for a couple of weeks and it's gone. Well, they put, they put, the insurance has put paying for some of those. That thing's weird. Why do you say? Two different mechanisms you have a liver transplant down the road, way more expensive than so is cannabis. So I don't know why they quit. Okay, HPV cervical cancer, right? It gets inside of the cells, causes transformation, damage to the DNA. Um, HTLV1 is a, a retrovirus on like HIV. It actually takes its DNA and inserts it into yours, and that's done. Once it's inserted, a retrovirus inserts its DNA in your DNA, it is there for the rest of unless you can clear the virus. And that's what sets it apart from other viruses is because it, it gets into the DNA. They can integrate, they all that's integrate right, right into the DNA. What is it called? That's just the name of it? Retro. It's a retrovirus. It's, it's, it's human T-cell lymphoma uh, virus one. So it's uh, RNA virus, right? No. Some RNA virus? Yeah, they're, they're retroviruses. So the, what is the normal central dogma of biology? DNA, RNA, protein, right? What do retroviruses do? What's different about them? Not, but kind of, you know, RNA, DNA, back to RNA, then the protein. Yeah. And when they go back to double-stranded DNA, they insert it into your DNA. And that's the problem with them. That's how long it can cause cancer, because they'll insert it into an oncogene, which is a gene that promotes cancer, right? These guys right here. How does hep C cause cancer? It's not a, a, a retrovirus, not a DNA virus. Um, How long does it take to get liver cancer from hep C? 10 years. It's, yeah, it takes a long time, at least 10 years, right? This is through chronic inflammation. So that's the finding out. About 25% 20, of cancer has been linked to viral infections directly. Some other ones have been linked to viral infections, but it's from chronic inflammation, a chronic attack from the immune system. So that's what happens with your liver. As long as you have hep C, or hep B for that matter, hep C is probably worse. The virus is always there replicating, right? And your immune system is always doing what? Attacking it. Okay. Trying to attack it, fight it off, so you get this chronic inflammation. And then that, that creates um, out of whack. Right, and yeah, just that kind of inflammation could cause Cells to start, you start getting fibrotic tissue in there, and then you start getting all kinds That's of stuff. That's it. you start getting activated stella cells. All right. What was an oncolytic virus? Can you write some of that? Is? You guys will probably see these when you get into hospitals and clinics and stuff now. 
So an oncogenic virus, genesis is to make, right? Yeah. So it's cancer making. Stopping them? Slowing up. Lysing. <laughs> which is to kill, right? Oh, so what would an oncogenic virus like be? Like that one you were talking yeah. about. The, no, Chris. That, well, they can use they can use CRISPR. It's a little bit different. Okay. This is alkylating viruses. These are viruses they've engineered now to infect only cancer cells and kill the cancer cells. Oh. And this is the one they use on Jimmy Carter. Remember him, the peanut president? Do you remember him? Anybody kind of know what happened to him about four years ago? He came down with metastatic melanoma in the brain. What normally means you've got a what? Brain cancer. Or about two months to live if you're lucky. They've developed an oncolytic virus. They infect that with. It goes in. It only infects the melanoma cells. Reproduces lysis, and when the tumor's gone, the virus is can't infect anymore. And he's out walking around still. Stop. Right. Eukaryotes, fungi, protists, algae, contain a what? That makes them a eukaryote, right? This is a huge group. We won't spend too much time into it. Prokaryotes are going to be what? Bacteria. Bacteria or archaea, but there are no pathogenic archaea, so we throw them out of this class. Okay. All right. So classification of bacteria. According to their shape, their microscopic appearance, are they rods? Are they cocci? Are they vibrio? Are they spirochetes? Are they pleomorphs? Am I missing anything? Please. Don't think so, right? What does it mean if they're gram positive and gram negative? <coughs> Staying what, people who have Marco? It's a. Gram positive has a thick Yes. Good. Gram positive has a thick pepto lichen. Gram negative has a. The double. The little thin little one, and gram negative also have what? The two. Side. Huh? LPS. They have that outer membrane, the LPS on them. Good. The gram positive organisms are stained purple by primary basic stains. I don't care if you know that. Just know they stain what color? Purple. purple or blue or violet. Okay? Gram negative organisms not stained by crystal violet, but they're counter stained by saffronin. They're going to be red or pink. pink. And another way you can do it is their carbon source. What sugar can they use? What sugar can they not use? Can they use lactose? Can they use maltose? Okay. What is their food source? Okay. And then there's some other ones too, but these are the main right here. Now, all gram negative organisms, by virtue of having LPS, lipid A, can make you what? Sick. Sick. Does that mean they're worse than gram positive? No. 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 I'll be over here somewhere in this last chapter right now. No? Okay. This gram negative slide, this gram positive. All right. These are some examples of gram positive. What is MRSA? Good. That for it. What's MRSA? Vancomycin resistance. That for it. This one's way worse. Yeah. Well, they have MRSA than MRSA, right? But MRSA is becoming very prevalent in hospitals now. Streptomonia causes. Strep. Oh, pneumonia causes pneumonia. Pneumonia, people. <laughs> strep pyogenes causes yeah. strep throat. Strep throat. Strep throat. Yeah. Okay. Agents still respond. Most of the streps still respond pretty well to a lot of the antibiotics. Clostridium, C. diff, botulinum, perfringes. Okay. All three of those will do what to you? Kill you. Kill you, in fact, the most potent toxin known to man is what? Botulinum toxin. toxin. So let me go get some Botox. Let me go pump in the most potent toxin known to man and stick it in my face. <laughs> Never figured that out. Well, I guess people are making a lot of money. Bacillus anthracis causes anthrax. Anthrax. VRE, this case. What you guys are going to run to is going to be here, 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 here. VRE is what? In our pocket. Yeah. That's another one of the big nosocomal infections that we're talking about. These are the ones you guys are going to run into. Okay? 
air toxins going on as long as it stays put, it's fine. Mycobacterium, tuberculosum, and leprae, TB, and leprosy, right? Not that big of a deal. Although TB still kills what? <coughs> More people than HIV in the world right now. It's oh. the second leading cause of death still in the world. And listeria is a foodborne pathogen that is becoming more and more what? Prevalent. Prevalent right now. You see listeria outbreaks all the time. Okay, so those gram positives are pretty nasty, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there are a lot of gram negatives in the bottom. For validate, it's going to cause pertussis. What is pertussis? Uh, uh, whooping cough. cough. Campylobacter, what is Campylobacter? Oh, that lights up, no? Nope, nope. Uh, Can't go back to what? Yeah, sorry, a long way to breathe. Something with your GI, you know, or something? Yeah. Chlamydia, we're going to put that in the chlamydia aid later on. It's technically in this, but it's false and belongs out in really big cell walls. But we'll leave this one out right now. Lyme disease is what? Is that becoming more and more prevalent? Yes. Yes, yeah, it's starting to spread. What is E. coli? What is 015787? 015787 is a bad one. This is the bad one. Hmm? The sugar toxin is the bad one? Yeah, now, sugar toxin is the one that can cause what? Hemolytic breathing syndrome, which is the kidney we'll talk about now. This is the one that kills you by damaging your kidneys. Okay? H. Helobacter, H. pylori. Ulcers in your. Ulcers. And it also increases the likelihood of getting. Hmm? Cancer. 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 Legionella's disease, Legionnaire's disease, there were four outbreaks, two in the Bronx, two in Paris. Neisseria is going to be the STI, gonorrhea, and Neisseria meningitis is the one you guys should have been vaccinated against because it can cause death in how long? Is anybody remember from my Four hours. Four hours after four hours. Hours. show up. Isn't that, but there's like two that, that you said, right? There's one that does it in four hours and one that yeah, does well, yeah, bacterial. Yeah, well, Viral meningitis isn't nearly as bad. The salmonella, shigella, and vibrio cholera are all going to be what? They, they're the ones that, well, I know salmonella hides in your own immune system. So where do you get these from? Where do you get these from? Food. Food and water, right? Cholera mostly water. These guys you get from food. It's called a fecal oral route, right? What is this one right here? It's an STI. Well, the few ones have nothing to do with the name of the disease. Never heard of it. Anybody? So what's a sexually transmitted infection? It's not gonorrhea, not here. Nope, nope, that's a uh, UTI. No. It's an STI, it's not chlamydia, because that's right here. It's like syphilis. 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 right there. I don't remember that being the name. <laughs> <laughs> that's the genus thing. So your cinea is going to be what? Anybody remember that one? You see this pestis, what is that called? Oh, uh, flesh. Huh? Okay. Um, this is a plague. The black plague. Oh. Okay. So, ratio is one you guys will see later because it likes to grow on catheters and it's saving solution. So, it's a huge issue where? Hospitals. Hospitals. It's one of the big opportunistic pathogens. And saline and what else? Catheters. Catheters. Like catheters. No, 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 no that's that. Serratia, serratia grows red. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah. There's two that yeah. give you. There's two that give you a red rash though. There's a. There's uh, several. Well, I remember specifically from okay. the Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not talking about everything. <laughs> One of them is going to be strep pneumonia. I mean strep pyogenes, right? You get scarlet fever, they can do red rash. <coughs> serratia. Let me look. Maybe it does. I'll just go back and look. Can't think right now. I'm thinking the red color. I know what it may. I'll go back and look. Don't you guys think? Pseudomonas. There's another opportunistic pathogen. This is one you guys will come across in CF patients and burn victims. This is really, these are both really hard to treat because they're opportunistic pathogens, but they're all gonna be what? Why would they be hard to treat? They're all antibiotic resistant to some of this, yep. All right, what I didn't put on here, I just put at the end of this, the paper, I like a uh, synopsis from a paper, Klebsiella pneumoniae. You ever heard of that one? That's for HIV infusions? Uh, just there, but that's one of the What is it? That's like Klebsiella pneumoniae. Club? That's the biggest one that kills them, right? 
Yeah, well, you can't, you can't. Well, it's not the new one, it's just the cost of the money. That's the real bad one. Oh, okay. The FCL is an opportunistic in hospitals. But they just went and looked at the drains next to the toilets in hospital rooms versus the drains that are closer to the door. 87% of the drains in the toilets have Club Cielo going on. Only 21% of the other drains do. So that means it's really what in those hospitals? Prevalent. Prevalent. That means 87%, almost 9 out of 10 have it growing in there. All right. Parasites. Protozoans are sickle cells, malaria, Chagas disease, African sleeping sickness, <coughs> leishmaniasis, helmets, going to be roundworms, cestodes, tapeworms, flukes, liver fluke, lung fluke, rat lung fluke. So we just died of that not too long ago. I don't know where they got it. Arthropods are going to be what? Fleas, ticks. Fleas, ticks, lice, anything that's called ectoparasitism. Okay. So the method for infecting these members of the animal kingdom infect or cause disease in other animals, right? That's their parasites, right? Mm -hmm. These animals then transmit disease to what? Humans. Humans. Most of the parasites we end up getting, are they actually human parasites? No. Yeah. No, there's some other things. We're usually not the host they want to be in. And a lot of times that's why they cause disease. If you give a pork mm -hmm. tapeworm, does that tapeworm want to be in you? No. No, it wants to be in what? In the pig you ate. It wants to be in a pig, right? And it gets out and unsits in you and it starts crawling around. And it's like, this ain't a pig. <laughs> what does it try to do? Get out. A lot of these things try and get out. That's why they cause a lot of damage. So then the blood system, and they'll start moving around trying to get out. Okay. What's a vector and what's a root of infection for a lot of these? Ticks. A vector is going to be what? How they travel? Like, how do they get to? Well, the vector usually means something in particular. Oh, they're on their carries. Yeah. But what carries it? Like its mode of transportation, like. But when you talk about vectors, what are they usually talking about? Animals. What? What it's on? <laughs> what are you talking about? What you, what most of the time, it's called vector control in El Paso, actually. These are going to be arthropods that are going to carry these organisms from person to person. Usually, what? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Flies. Yeah. Flies can be, they can be mechanical vectors. Right? The vector is going to be an arthropod that's going to transmit a disease. From, that, from something else to you. What animal kills more humans every year than any other animal? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes by a huge number because they're what? The vector for what? Give me four examples of vector born, mosquito born illnesses. Malaria. Uh -huh. But that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> that's a hard one. Uh -huh. Ooh, so that was easy. West Nile, good. That was here, right? Oh, and the one, uh, the one that makes pregnant. Um... The one that makes you pregnant. Whoa. No, oh, the pregnant God. one's sick. Zika. Zika. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Zika. What else? One more. Doesn't have to be mosquito either. Oh, I thought we were doing oh, mosquito. Do I say mosquito? Yes. No, I didn't say mosquito. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Yellow fever. Yellow fever. There's another one. I was pretty much eradicated. All right, and the root of infection is just what? Like it could be airborne, like, foodborne. How, how do you get infected? How does that organism get how? inside of you? That's the root of infection. So vectors, what uh, vectors. what anthropod made you sick? And that's what's carrier. What's a carrier? Okay, disease, 